Hello, everybody. Hello. Ah, we're so lucky. We're so lucky. He's back in town after going to Italy for two weeks. The lucky judge, Andrew Napolitano, is back in in the United States and uh, took a little break, but he's back in action again. And what he's in action about is the inaction that American people are taking as we're losing our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Judge, welcome back. Uh, thank you, Gerald. A pleasure to be with you, my friend. I thought of you at the many places I went to in Italy, thinking Gerald would love this. Gerald would, would fit in right here. <laughs> uh, you know, you have an article that's coming out tomorrow. Has liberty, again, you know, the, the, this is what I, I was just saying, uh, how we lost our liberty. Has liberty died in our hearts? Liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies there, no constitution, no law, no court can save it. No constitution, no law, no court can even do much to help it. This is Judge Leonard Hand, 1872 to 1961. Where the cat lived a long time. You go on to say, last week, a judge on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court revealed that he had enough of the FBI and Congress trashing the Constitution. The normally secretive court and the normally secretive judge explained in a rare public opinion the unlawful behavior of the FBI agents. You ready? Spying on ordinary Americans in violation of the Fourth Amendment, the FISA judge revealed that the FBI has spied illegally on nearly 300,000 Americans in 2022. Correct. Correct. And among them was a United States senator, not named publicly, but they have told the senator who he is, a state uh, senator and a state judge. I'll tell you about the state judge in a minute. It's scandalous uh, what happened to him. So right after 9-11... Uh, the most incompetent president in the modern era, George W. Bush, in order to deflect attention from his own sleepiness in the days leading up to 9-11, began to blame everybody and everything for 9-11. And the principal object that he blamed was the Constitution and the Fourth Amendment. Same Constitution he took an oath to uphold. He persuaded Congress to override the Fourth Amendment, which Congress does not have the authority to do, and tell the FBI and the NSA, you can go ahead and spy on foreigners in the U.S. without suspicion and without a warrant, just because they're foreign. Then the law says, what happens if foreigners speak to Americans? Well, if foreigners communicate with Americans, you got to take that data and put it in a database, and the FBI can only access that data with a search warrant. The FISA court judge revealed that in 2022 alone, just last year, almost three, the FBI accessed that database without a search warrant almost 300,000 times. Now, those are innocent Americans, could be you and me, could be the people watching and listening to us now. There's no search warrant on them. There's no suspicion about them. There's no knowledge of who they are. But the FBI, which is given custody of the database, couldn't resist the temptation to go in there without a search warrant, and it happened that many times. The state trial judge observed criminal behavior by local police violating the civil rights of people in his courtroom. He complained to local authorities. They told him to go take a hike. He <laughs> filed a formal complaint with the FBI, and what did the FBI do? Spied on him. You can't make this stuff up. So the point of my article is we are losing liberty. This came out on Saturday morning. The judge revealed it on Friday afternoon. There was no debate over the weekend. It was buried in the back pages of the newspapers. It wasn't even in any of the major uh, websites. Why? Because the government's violations of the Constitution today have become so regular, consistent, and systematic that they don't shock any longer. And the more the government does this, it's just another step on the stairway to totalitarianism. The more they do this, the more they can get away with it. And the public needs to know about this. Now, this, this 
law that was passed under Bush that allows the spying without warrants on foreigners, even if they uh, spy on Americans, expires Christmas time in five months. And Congress is deciding what to do about it. And Congressman Jim Jordan, Republican of Ohio, who happens to be the chair of the House uh, Judiciary uh, Committee, is a fierce opponent of Section 702. It may very well go down. Biden, of course, uh, is in favor of it. The big government people in the Republican and Democratic Party uh, parties in Congress are in favor of it. The people in Congress that the intelligence community has dirt on, which is almost all of them, they're in favor of it. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, you began by saying that Bush persuaded Congress. <laughs> how... How, that shows you what a bunch of low-life jerks we got running the show. How yeah. could that little clown persuade anybody with a brain bigger than a pea? Agreed. And that there was he is. There he is. Comes. Yep. Look at the guy. That shows you how low America has gone. And what did you say that of, of all the presidents, he was probably, what did you say? The least competent in the post-World War II uh, era. Yeah. But he shrewdly used fear, fear of another 9-11 as an instrument to pass the Patriot Act, to amend the uh, FISA Act, uh, and to uh, curtail our liberties. And we all know that liberties, once curtailed, don't come back. Once the government gets their hands on our freedom, the government is fighting maniacally to get this Section 702 uh, reinstated. I'll tell you a funny story because it involves Donald Trump. This thing expires every five years. So five years ago, Trump was in the White House. I was still at Fox. The House and the Senate had passed the reenactment of it. Trump had one more day to sign it or veto it. I was hosting Fox and Friends in the morning. I looked in the camera. I said, Mr. President, this law that they want you to sign, this is the same authority they used to spy on you when you were in Trump Tower, and my bosses were pissed off at me, but I said, but I said it anyway. Trump tweets, I'm not signing it. Well, in the next hour, Mike Pence, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell go running to the Oval Office and they say to Trump, Don't believe the judge. Oh. He thinks the Constitution means what it says. Trump sends me a message. They twisted my arm. I had to sign it. Trump has since said to me, I will never sign this thing again. If I become president, it will die on the vine. Yeah, that's what he said. I know he said the he, same thing yeah. about the he said the same thing about the JFK uh, files, and then he changed his mind. Yeah, on that. yeah. And, uh, and you know, you you this article you you have um, about this this article coming out on Friday. That's what they do, by the way. Because back in the day when there was a thing called journalism, and that's gone now too, because they're just, I mean, there, there are no newspapers anymore. They're, they're owned by private equity groups and they're. Right. By, there, they're there's people like you, Cy Hirsch, Ritter, McGregor, my efforts, but no, there's the, the mainstream media is lock step in line with the government, with the CIA, and with the British uh, MI6. That's why the American public thinks that Ukraine is winning the war, whereas in reality, they are within inches of being uh, demolished. McGregor yep. thinks that that uh, Zelensky is looking for a place to live as we speak, outside of Ukraine. And, and again, talking about this article that, that you wrote about, the information that came out, the reason they sent, put it out late Friday is because if they did put it out in the media, Saturday is the least watched day of news. I wrote about that in my book, Trend Tracking, back in 1989. So the government, when they come out with information that they have to put out, but they don't want you to hear about, they put it out on Friday afternoons because everybody, the, the journalists used to leave, you know, the Capitol building. You quit early on Friday. And then it gets published on Saturday and Saturday's the least watched and, and read day of the news. So the least amount of people know about 
the terrible things that the government is doing. It's been going on for a long time, but there's no journalism left. You know, I, I want to go back to this article that you have here because, you know, you said enough is enough. If we don't fire and prosecute the folks who have sullied the Constitution, if we are no longer outraged at its most obvious violations, if we elect to office those who promise to uphold it and reelect them after they have trashed it, we must recognize that we have lost freedom in our hearts. Judge, you could not have said that more passionately and truthfully. The people have lost the spirit of fight in their hearts. They don't care about freedom. You know, think about it. If you do not believe what the government shoves down your throat, then you believe in misinformation. The whole thing with the COVID war. If ah. you don't believe what they say, you believe in misinformation and you're a conspiracy theorist. Look, the, the COVID war demonstrated that we have lost liberty in our hearts. There was more love of liberty in a bunch of Canadian truck drivers yep. than in the whole state of New Jersey or state of New York or state of California or state of Michigan who just bowed to the dictators that uh, silenced them. And look what, look what that little daddy's boy, another arrogant, a, 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 a family member probably of, the, of the, the daddy's boy club, like little Georgie Bush, a little moron of nothing. A little more, but my daddy was George Bush and my grandfather was Prescott. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the little Trudeau up there. Yeah. My daddy was Pierre. Pierre Trudeau. I'm a nobody, but I'm Justin Trudeau just here. And I'm going and I'm gonna screw over those freedom fighters by passing an emergency act to rob them of their freedom, put them in jail and steal their money. A right. democracy. A democracy. We have lost our freedom. And by the way, I was very involved in the truckers uh, movement. When they had rallies, I was speaking at them via Zoom. And these were real men and women that were fighting for freedom. And look what the government did to them. Passing an emergency act. The government, the government stole gasoline from their trucks. If you were, or I did that, we'd be arrested. Yeah. The government took the air out of the tires of their trucks. Some of them, this is the middle of the winter, were taking hot baths outside in blow-up uh, backyard pools. The government pinpricked the pools. I mean, what the government did became acts of terror and destruction. But, of course, the government makes itself immune from the consequences of breaking its own laws. Governments have been doing that for hundreds of years. And what were they protesting? They didn't want to get vaccinated to right. cross the border. They wanted to it. control their own bodies. Yeah. Oh, what What's happened more? to my body, my choice? Oh, that. Right. Oh, by the way, th th those phonies of the My Body, My Choice Club, they spent over $11 million, according to CNBC, Planned Parenthood, telling people to get vaccinated. To shot po the hypocrisy. So well, going why? back to what you're saying here is that we have lost our freedom and that if people don't unite and stand up for it, then we're finished because you went back and, and I, I wrote what you said about Bush, about how he got these clowns to sign what he wanted and he sold fear. Correct. Fear is what gets the people. Right. Eighty-eight percent of the people believed him. We're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden dead or alive. So now let's go back. Now, I think we are in for another fear crisis in the run-up to the 2024 elections to get the people off the the minds off the people of the clowns, the jerks that are running this country, so they can keep staying in control and robbing us of our freedom. I agree with you. I don't know in what form it's going to uh, take. It may be uh, nuclear, yep. but obviously uh, old Joe is uh, poking and prodding the bear 
I mean, he just called up 3,000 reservists, a relatively small number, but guess where they're going? Poland. Yeah. Reservists from New York, New Jersey, and Texas are going to Poland? For what? For what? The Polish army is at the border, and it can't wait to go into Ukraine. It would be suicidal if they did that, but the Polish leadership is uh, is prodding them on. There we go. These, these front covers are fantastic. A picture is literally worth a thousand words yep. uh, when you look at them because Joe Biden wants to run for re-election as a wartime president. Right now, the American public is indifferent to the war, but if they do something to put fear in the hearts of the American public, they'll, they'll back the government. Actually, over 60% of the American public supports the war. Unbelievable. Well, they, they only read one side. They only of get course. one side. You're not allowed to talk about peace or facts. Here again, right. we wrote about it in the Trends Journal, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, going back to 2014, about the how the United States overthrew the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych in Ukraine. All there. But people have no idea. They don't know what a Minsk agreement is. They never heard of, of, of George Bush Sr., and Gorbachev making the deal that NATO would not move one inch further. There were 16 NATO countries, and now Correct. there are 31. Correct. Uh -huh. And that, and now NATO is 800 miles east of where it was when Bush and Jim Baker, and it's not Bush or Jim Baker's fault, obviously, promised that it wouldn't move one inch. It's moved yep. 800 miles. And they all have missiles aimed at Moscow. So picture this. The Chinese government takes over Mexico. And they have missiles aimed at Dallas and Miami. How the hell do you think we'd react? Yeah. And how about the Russians up in Canada with right. missiles aimed at us? Right, aimed at Detroit and Chicago and New York. You, you yeah. can imagine how we'd react. So you understand how Putin is reacting. You know, there's the front page of today's Wall Street Journal, big picture on the top, showing a, a Russian jet. Russian jet shoots down... Uh, American drone over Syria. What, what the hell are we doing in Syria? Syria? We right. have no right being there. Correct. Did oh, you we mean we're spilling the oil? Is that what you're telling me? Gerald, did Congress declare war on Syria? And did we miss that declaration of war? We're getting them ISIS's over there. Don't you know? We're fighting ISIS. We're <laughs> stealing their oil. Right. Right. We have we are invaded a foreign nation that is no threat to us. Correct. Well, we've been doing that for 150 years, but we're still doing it. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so it goes back to your the conclusion of your article that if we no longer if we are no longer outraged at the most obvious violations, if we elect to office those who promise to uphold it and re-elect them after they've trashed it, we must recognize that we have lost freedom in our hearts, and then it is gone. You can't be any clearer. No, it's By the way, I'll be speaking at a rally um, on August 6th, Humanity for Peace. Scott Riddle will be there and others. And it's be at the United Nations. So go to Humanity for Peace and find out more about it because we're doing everything we can you know, to fight in the name of freedom, peace, and justice. And as the judge said, that we've lost freedom in our hearts. So if you don't do anything, you know, it's, it's, it's up to the people to change it. And it's very sad. This article you wrote is, is very, it's devastating. And it's just another article of your weekly ones that keeps showing how we keep losing our our freedom in this country and uh, and and how the people aren't fighting back. And again, you know, going back to your article, you, you mentioned that in just one year, they they uh, the FBI, nearly 300,000 people they spied in illegally. What did they accomplish by it? Ah, what, what, that's a, what did they accomplish? Tell me that is a very good question. We don't know, and they don't know. So, and 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 the three hundred thousand people don't know who they are. Yeah, that that is just absolutely devastating. Has that kept the country safer 
all this spying on innocent people. These are not people as to which there was suspicion or probable cause or the FBI would have gone out and get a warrant. These are these are people that the FBI could not get a warrant on because there's no basis for the warrant. But still, they scooped up all that data when you went to the doctor, what you told the doctor, what the doctor put in his uh, or her a uh, laptop, how much money you have in the bank, what you told your uh, lawyer, what checks you're writing. What business of that is the government's? Uh, and again, let FBI, we, it shouldn't even exist. Correct. That Correct. little clown that, 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 that we used to be ahead of it, J. Edgar Hoover, that little jerk of a nothing clown boy. Bobby, and then... Uh, Let's, Bobby let's Kennedy says forward. that Bobby Kennedy says it will shut the FBI down. Yep. And shut the CIA down. Yep. And then they'll shut him down. Probably. And then let's go back. Homeland Security. Not in CIA, the Constitution. FBI, NSA. What have they accomplished? The trillions of dollars that it's that they steal from us to keep these clown shows going. What have they accomplished? You have Tell answered me. it. You have Tell answered me. it. The trillions of dollars they have enriched themselves. That's all they've accomplished. They've bought the most expensive equipment in the world. Here's a cocktail party conversation question for you. What's the largest building in the world? It's in the Utah desert. It's the storage facility for the NSA. It's five yeah. times the size of the Pentagon. Our tax dollars paid about it. Most Americans don't even know that this monstrosity exists. Who was enriched by it? Whoever the military industrial complex was that they went to to build this thing. What does it cost to operate? Well, it's got to be air conditioned. It's in the Utah desert. It's five times the size of the Pentagon. You can only imagine what the electricity bills are. Yeah, and how they're, and, and how they're using up all the natural resources there while they're poisoning it at the same time. Again, Judge, thank you so much for what you're doing. And, and everybody listening, please do what you can do. Because if you don't do anything, then, you know, the, the, I, I always quote that St. Thomas Aquinas, that anyone that is not angry when it's justifiably ang uh, justif justified to be angry is immoral. And those that are not angry when it is justifiably correct to be angry are immoral. And now is the time to be angry yes. because what they're doing to us is not justified. It's immoral. And so that's, a, you know, that's not his exact quote, but that's basically what he said. So judge, thank you so much. And we'll um, see you uh, next, next week. week. And remember hit the like button to subscribe and don't forget the judge is going to have Scott Ritter on this Friday on his Correct. his uh, podcast, uh, Judging Thank Freedom. Thank you. Yep, Thank so, you, Gerald. Thanks yep. for a wonderful half hour with you. All the best. Thank you.